Hello everyone, it's Connor here from MenuDocs and welcome back to a new video on the channel. In today's video, we're going to be making a discord.js docs command. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you can be updated whenever we upload to the channel. So, without further ado, let's get straight into this video. Basically, we're going to be using some properties here that um, will give the bot more information. So for instance, we're going to need usage. So we're going to put the usage property here and assign it a string with um, the following. So with our help command, we've got it as these parameters or these brackets, for instance, as uh, like soft requirements. So basically they're optional. Uh, and these are strict, so we're going to use these. I'm going to just do simply search query in here. Uh, that's because you're going to need to provide a search query in the command to be able to get the information that you require. Um, next, what we're going to do after that is after usage, uh, we're going to pretty much need to check the bot's perms. So using our permission handling uh, system, we're going to provide an array. And inside the array, we're going to have the following perms. So add reactions to make sure that the bot has access to add reactions within the channel because it's not a generic perm that everyone's going to have. So just to double check with that, as well as manage uh, underscore messages. And that is to delete the message uh, once I show you uh, pretty much what we're doing. Uh, so let's go on to the next line. And because we need a strict argument here, so basically a, a parameter needs to be passed, we're just going to basically say that args is true. Uh, pretty much saying that the bot requires further information to be able to execute the command. So without further ado, let's get straight into this command. So we're going to be using something called node fetch. If you're not familiar with node fetch, uh, it's just the node.js version of fetch from the window or like JavaScript in a window. So yeah, we're going to pretty much be using that. So we're just going to require an in node fetch. Uh, but yeah, let's get straight into it. So we're going to do const URL equals and we're pretty much going to have the following url uh and just copy it kind of uh word for word here letter for letter uh because it's going to be a, a pretty long one here so it's discord uh, well it's djs docs dot sorter dot mo uh forward slash v2 forward slash embed and then we're going to have a, a question mark here we're going to do source we're going to equal stable and then we're going to do uh and q equals and that is when we're going to use our parameters here we're going to do encode uh uri component and inside here provide query which we have happily uh down below here uh down not down below above uh deconstructed here or spread sorry um the arguments we provide through the run function following this what we're going to do is do const doc fetch equals await fetch fetch and then we are going to provide url and that is going to simply await the fetching of the url and then we're going to proceed to make the returned information or make sure the returned information is of course uh, a json format now following this what we're going to do is we're just going to do some sort of handling here so we're going to check if there is an embed so if there isn't an embed or uh, there is an embed.error because basically this API was made for, to be used in Discord bots. Um, so it has like pretty much the message embed kind of stuff already set in stone with the actual uh, like API itself. So we don't actually have to require the message embed. It does it for us, which is sweet. Uh, a little bit of information about this API. Um, it's made directly to be used in the discord.js uh, community discord. Um, if you don't know what that is, just check out the docs. It has a link to that. But pretty much the bot that's in there, they made an API for it so that it could, you know, easily be able to handle the um, docs and that. Uh, but it became public and now people use it. Rady, rady, ra. Um, but yeah, originally it was not made to be public. And I'm guessing they have tons upon tons of uh, traffic. Because I, I know, for instance, I've used it in various different bots. A very useful resource uh, we use it in the menu docs discord as well which you can join link in the description and also pinned in the comment section documentation and then we're also just going to provide the documentation here as well uh so when we when we put it in these kind of like uh like rigid brackets it stops it from embedding when i say embedding i mean like a so it use, doesn't use the metadata discord doesn't handle the metadata to be able to like embed it in discord we no longer need to do anything there 
Next, what we're going to do is we're going to check if it's in a Discord. Now, you might be asking, why not use the additional checks option that we have here? Because we can pretty much do like guild only true up here. The reason we're doing this is because we're going to handle it different in DMs than we do to in an actual Discord. So if we were to not have the embed sent in a Discord, so it was sent in a DM or magically some other realm that is not a guild, we're just simply going to return message.channel.send and we're going to send the embed. And I'm just going to put some spaces here. Now, you can also send it like uh, like this. Uh, I, I mean, you can do that. It's not shone upon. It's probably a better way to do it or it's the proper way to do it. But because the name of the, the embed itself is embed and the property are inside the options of the message, like the send function is also embed, we can just join them together and it will pretty much work like so. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wanna go outside of this yet again. We're gonna do const message equals await message.channel.send. And this is where we're gonna do the same thing we've done above. We're gonna send this embed. Um, but what we're doing here is we're assigning this promise here to a variable so that we can call upon it later down the code. And we're obviously going to await this because we don't want this to be called upon, this variable to be called upon before this has been executed because we might get some errors here. So that's why we're awaiting it. Following this on this line here, we're going to do message.react. And we're simply just going to need to react with a trash can. It's basically the Unicode of a trash can. I'll leave it in the description. And also I may comment it in the comment. Depends how I'm feeling. Last time I said that, I forgot about it. So don't quote me on this. Basically, you can go into Discord itself and add a backslash and then do waste. I think it's waste bin or something like that. And then you'll be able to get the Unicode of emojis if you didn't know that. Uh, but yeah, following this, what we're going to do is we're just going to do let react without any value of this variable. And then we're going to have a try catch here. So we're just going to set it open here. And we're gonna just going to set this to error. And then voila. Okay, so let's just bring this into the middle of the screen here. Basically, inside a try, <clears throat> this is error handling, for instance. So we're going to try some code. If it fails, then it's going to go into this catch part. But this is pretty much just so that we can handle the way that, um, like, if there's no reaction provided and such and such. We're going to do react equals await message dot await reaction. And then following this on the following line, we're going to do two parameters. So reaction and user uh, inside an arrow function as as so. We're going to do reaction dot map. Um, no, sorry, not reaction dot map. And do reaction.emoji.name equals and then we're going to provide this trash can again because that's the name apparently and user.id equals message.author.id now what are we doing here what is this this is the filter of the await reactions here but pretty much what we're doing is we're saying if the reaction like the emoji that's being provided to the the reaction or sorry let, let, let's backstep. Basically, what we're saying is if this trash can is the reaction that's being added to this message here, um, as well as the user ID being the message author ID, so the person that invoked the original command, uh, it's just going to let it pass. If not, then it's just going to say no, nah, and it's going to pretty much just ignore it. Um, but yeah, let's go to the next line. What we're going to do is we're going to want uh, a max of one. So because we're only going to pretty much check the user ID. So this, this is the user here, the user ID. That's the user that has provided the original emoji. We're only going to check that. Basically, we're only going to get one reaction. So we want to check for the max being one. And then we're going to provide a time. So when do we want this given by? So we're going to give it 10 seconds. And then also we're going to do errors and errors is in an array. So we're just going to do time because time is an error um, and then add a space here. Following this, how are we going to handle it if it does quote unquote error? Error being the time runs out. We're just simply going to do message.reactions.remove all. And pretty much what this is going to do is in the name, it says remove all. It's going to remove all the emotes from the message. Uh, pretty much cleaning up after itself if I do say so. Uh, now let's go down two more lines. What are we doing? We're going to do if react. So basically if there is a value for react and 
if react dot first so if there is one provided what we're just going to do is we're going to do message dot delete as simple as so and then we're just going to simply handle some stuff here we're just going to do return message basically if we don't do this uh let's see if i can show you here uh there's trailing space yeah so basically uh expected to return a value at the end of the message uh basically we're just going to return message and handle it like that so that is the command there what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly save it and then we're going to go test it in our discord today's video is proudly powered by our partner oxide hosting get your products hosted by them with their cheap reliable services so what are you waiting for check them out in the description below so now that we've done that what we're going to do is just simply run the command we can do uh we'll just for instance put client in and we will get the information for a client but we could also let's say we mess it up okay we're gonna have client -y. it's gonna give us the most co common or similar results here uh, but we can also get rid of the embed as well. Uh, I'm going to say my Discord's probably screwed up there. Oh, wait, hold up. Unless I have... Yeah, wait, no, I've screwed up. Right here, it needs to be MSG. Okay, so we're just going to simply rerun the code here. Um, basically, what happened there was I assigned it to the original message, so the one that's been invoked by the, the person. So let's say I was to run the command, discord.js client, that is the original invoking message. But... I was attempting to delete the like the wrong message, um, but yeah. So if we, you know, let's let's show that again. Uh, oh, I've clicked out the box by accident, or have I? Uh oh, uh oh, it's broken. What have I done? It it it's broken. I I don't know what I've done, but I've broken. Oh, there we go. It's back. Um, so for instance, I can do message embed, right? It's gonna show us all the properties and methods of message embed, and then I am going to get this rubbish box and it's going to get rid of the embed how wonderful was that so basically if you for instance bring up the wrong thing you can get rid of it within 10 seconds and that's pretty much what that is it's it's mostly for like stuff like this so it's going to show us you mo the most like uh common thing so if you get it wrong for instance and you don't want people seeing that you just get rid of it and voila it's gone and there's going to be no errors in the console whatsoever anyways guys i hope you have enjoyed this video uh, please be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, as well as check out our YouTube membership system. Basically, we're handing out rewards for people that go on a subscription-based, uh, like, payment thing towards us, uh, for YouTube. Uh, basically, every single tier gets access to videos in advance, which is absolutely amazing. Um, and we're happy that we're able to do this for you guys. Anyways, I will catch you guys in the next video. Uh, this has been Connor, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.